explain the situation where two people can be working in the same environment or living in the same environment and one will get cancer and the other one will not? Right. Now there are many, many different things that can make a person susceptible to growing cancer. So is it genetic? You would think so, but yeah, they are, like with breast cancer, it's just a one or two or three percent of uh, cases of cancer. So that's really not very much. Um, there are genetic factors that may contribute uh, to make a person more susceptible, but uh, that is something that has been generated uh, usually at birth or before birth uh, during the exposure of the mother to, let's say, harmful radiation. We now know that changes the genetic you know, blueprint. Mm -hmm. Um, like cell phones. If a pregnant wo woman uses a cell phone or has a cell phone close to a newborn, then uh, that is now uh, known to create uh, growth uh, process problems. And whenever you interfere with the growth processes, you, the likelihood of developing cancer down the road is very high. Um, so there, there are factors like that that are yeah, happened in the womb or the, the nourishment, the, you know, the diet of the mother okay. uh, that uh, led to congestion. And then uh, again, your genetic your blueprint may be disturbed. Um, the, the genes are not really responsible for causing cancer. They are just blueprints. You can take the nucleus out of a cell, mm -hmm. put it in a test tube, and then observe it. It will continue to perform all the natural, the normal uh, productions of proteins and everything that the cell does uh, in the body. But it cannot reproduce itself, it cannot divide at the end of its natural cycle. Usually six weeks for mm -hmm. most cells, uh, plasma cells live two to ten days and then they die. Um, bone cells live three months and then they die and they get replaced with new ones. So the whole body is constantly turning over. Manufacturing new cells uh, and disposing of the yeah. But uh, when you take the nucleus out, it cannot do that anymore. Um, now, you, when we think that the body, the genes are responsible for causing that, what changed the genes to, to right. do that? You have to ask, what is the cause of a genetic mutation? The genes themselves are, are subject to the environment. They cannot change out of their own accord. There's nothing in them that suddenly says, oh, let's just you know, you know, get rid of that, you know, you know, that you know, gene and that mm -hmm. gene. So they are not uh, capable of doing that unless you create an environmental impact that will force them to change or mutate. And that would be suffocation in the, te in, in the case of cancer cells. So the contamination and the lack of oxygenation, which will increase the lactic acid content, mm -hmm. and that will interfere with the DNA and the RNA, and then that will create faulty programs, what we call faulty programs, um, that yeah, are actually survival mechanisms, mm -hmm. um, cancer 40. cells. <laughs> faulty programs, you know, that, okay. that is not a faulty program, it's just a different program that has been written by the DNA in order to survive in this hostile environment. All right, so two people work, working or living yeah. in the same environment, one would get cancer and the other one wouldn't. And this happens all the time. Diet, what, you know, what are the, diet, you know, the mm -hmm. diet preferences? Not everyone has the same preferences. You can have your know, sister and brother or two brothers and they have completely different uh, you mm -hmm. know, dietary uh, desires. So this one eats you know, hamburgers and the other one is a vegetarian. So it depends on that. There are many, many different factors. How happy is the person? What happened to the person when uh, he grew up? Mm -hmm. uh, did he have problems with the father or the mother? And was there any conflict, any loss, like um, you know, loss of a good friend? Mm -hmm. And the other person didn't have that. So you, you find uh, many, many different reasons why a person has a low self-esteem and low self-esteem is a big precursor that for cancer. It is. Huge. Melancholy yes. and, things, and depression and things like that? Absolutely, because your, your mind is not just you know, something in the air. <laughs> your mind, you think a thought and the thought is already creating, just the moment you think a thought, you create neuropeptides in the brain. 
neuropeptides are powerful hormones. They are they have receptor they have receptor sites for them in every cell in the body. That means the thought that you have here, mm -hmm. or you think you have it here, right. um, is translated into biochemicals that immediately change the biochemistry of your body. You're literally talking, and there are studies that were done in Russia, you're literally talking to your DNA by thinking thoughts or having feelings and emotions. Now, if you hold on to something in your life, like whatever you hold on to, mm -hmm. undigested food, undigested mental your images, mm -hmm. thoughts, emotions, anything you hold on to becomes a poison because you're not allowing the flow. The body is more like a river. Things have to move in and things have to move out. If you hold on to something, you hold on to what you're supposed to remove and therefore mm -hmm. that becomes a, a contamination. You're starting to uh, change the, the behavior of the body. So there okay. is a, um, an incredible research you know, done by Dr. Hammer, professor of a university clinic in Germany, and he treated 31,000 cancer patients. That's a huge number. Yes. And he found in every single instant, every per cancer patient had a conflict, a shock-like experience, where, let's say, um, a divorce, or someone died, or they had an accident, um, they were scared of something that happened to them and they couldn't clear that. They, 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 they were fearful of that ever since. So some conflict was creating a shock that created a lesion in the brain that connected, yeah, that linked to that part of the body where the tumor appeared. And that lesion that looked like a concentric circle, mm -hmm. he, he found that uh, every single cancer patient had them. And they, when he, uh, t he helped them clear the conflict, mm -hmm. let's say, for example, if a, a couple that was divorced, they made up, they got remarried, that basically resolved the conflict. All right. Okay. So then the lesion st you know, started to be surrounded by lymph you know, fluid, it became swollen, and then it broke down the entire structure of the lesion, and then a spontaneous remission occurred. And all those people that he treated that way, by mm -hmm. dealing with the root cause, the conflict, mm -hmm. they were cancer-free. He had 7,000 terminally ill cancer patients, and 6,000 of them are still alive after 20 years. And so they, they, had, they never died. All right. Simply because he dealt with the root cause, which is a psychosomatic year one. In that case, it was a psychosomatic, and yeah. yet if you contaminate your body with lots of toxins and, and that sort of thing, that can be the cause. Yes, but typically your lifestyle and your dietary desires, they are based on some okay. kind of lack of confidence, feeling not good enough, uh, looking for comfort foods. Mm -hmm. uh, we now know that uh, sugar stops the, uh, the, the DNA. It literally shuts down the DNA for up to two weeks. Now, when you do that to the DNA, you damage it. Okay. So, sugar is now a, a cause of cancer. And we would crave sugar to feel good. So, you, you crave sugar because you are you're looking for sweetness. The sweetness has gone out of your life. You look for comforting the sweetness. Sweetness is heavy and comforting. And it you know, sort of restores the appearance of energy in the body. It doesn't really. It's just depletes energy, but it's, it's not a real, um, you know, it's an empty, empty calorie, basically. Mm -hmm. And so it gets the sugar level up, and then afterwards it drops down, and you become depressed, or you you'd feel even you know, less energetic. And then you want the sugar again, and you start craving it more and more, until you cannot you know, let go and have an addiction.